Microsoft recently announced the Surface Go, a 10-inch Surface meant for regular consumers and the education market. A lot of people are asking me, why didn't they use Windows 10 on ARM and a Snapdragon processor? Today, we'll talk about the pros and cons of going with Intel versus Qualcomm. Stay tuned. All right, when it comes to the Surface Go, Microsoft went with an Intel Pentium Gold 4415Y. Yeah, we did say you in the original video. Sorry about that, you can blame Microsoft, but that's okay. The 4415Y is a pretty good processor. I'd used this device for a few minutes and I really had no issue with it. The most important takeaway for me was it's way better than Intel Atom. In fact, it's supposed to be two times the CPU performance of Intel Atom and two and a half times the graphics performance thanks to that Intel HD 615 GPU on board. So this should be a pretty impressive device for performance, but battery life is gonna be all right at nine hours of video, which if you know anything about laptops, nine hours quoted is actually one of the lowest battery lives we've been quoted at in 2018. That means realistically, I'm expecting five to six hours of usage. This is drastically different from what Qualcomm is promising with up to 20 to 22 hours in their devices. Now bringing that into realistic proportions is around 16 to 15 hours for regular use. That's drastically different though from Intel. So why isn't Microsoft using a Qualcomm processor? A lot of this has to come down to timing. The fact is right now, if they were to launch a Surface Go on August 2nd, it would come with a Snapdragon 835. That's the only processor that's available, even though we know Snapdragon 850 is due at the end of 2018 sometime. So that means they could do two options. Launch this with the Snapdragon 835, even though a lot of you know the 850 is coming, and then have to refresh it maybe late in 2018 or early 2019 with that 850 processor. But that doesn't make anyone happy. Or they could delay this device, the Surface Go, until late 2018 or early 2019 and go with that Snapdragon 850. You do that, however, you're gonna miss two critical things. One, the back to school sales in the education market, which this device is actually primarily geared at. The other thing you'll also miss is that holiday season, which is super important to hit. The fact is launching a laptop or a tablet device in say early 2019 and February or March really doesn't do anyone any good. That is not the prime time to launch those devices. In fact, what we start to see then is a lot of gaming laptops and refreshes coming on board, but not necessarily new launches. The other issue with going Qualcomm is it's not for everyone. Now, I really enjoy these devices. They're kind of for me, but there's a lot of caveats there. And that's fine. That's sort of what the world of PC is all about. After all, that MSI new gaming laptop, the GTX 1070 is pretty awesome. Is it for everyone? Absolutely not. But that's what PC is. It's finding a device that works for you. And Qualcomm and ARM does do that for a certain demographic and audience. That's not what Microsoft want to do though. They actually say this device is aiming to hit the most market share possible without caveats and performance compromise. That means going with Intel. Another thing is when you go with schools and enterprise, they don't wanna to have to have these little issues with does it run this software, does it run that, but if it runs it, is it emulated and not the performance is good? They can't deal with that. They're dealing with a lot of legacy apps and only Intel is going to deliver that. The trade-off though is you get less battery life and less performance and it's still pretty expensive. I often hear that people tell me that Intel is just cheaper than going with Qualcomm and ARM. That's actually not the case as far as we know. The processor that they're using in Surface Go has been at about $161, and Qualcomm's chips are estimated to be around $60 to $80, depending on what the form factor is. Now, one reason why Surface Go is actually cheaper than those ARM devices that are available now, like the NVX2 or Lenovo Mix 630, is because those devices have larger displays. They're two inches larger. They also ship with the pen in the box. They also ship with the keyboard and cover in the box. They also have doubled the storage. So there's a lot more going into those devices that bump up that price. Were you to add all those things to Surface Go, you'd quickly approach $1,000 as well. So the fact of the matter, this isn't really Intel versus Qualcomm. I mean, it is, but at the same time, the issue here is that Intel Pentium chip 
was introduced last year in 2017. Microsoft is using what's available to them. And the fact is, Intel doesn't really have a lot of stuff that's good in the low end that's also cheap and affordable. It also gives LTE built in, whereas Qualcomm and ARM is still a little too early. So they're kind of in a pinch right here. They could either wait till Snapdragon gets a lot better or wait till Intel comes out with something new. But waiting and waiting is not something that they have much of an option for, especially when they're trying to tackle this education market. So you just have to sometimes go with what's available on the market. And right now, Intel for this device is the best solution. But let's revisit this in another year or two, and I bet you we'll be talking a lot more about Qualcomm and ARM. But that's going to be a slow race and not necessarily a sprint. All right, so there are some quick thoughts on why Microsoft is using an Intel processor in the Surface Go. Now, if you want more information about this device, subscribe to this channel as we'll be covering a lot about the Surface Go in the next couple of weeks and months, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, leave me a comment below and tell me what you think. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.